book, uh, Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Lengel, is a book that I read probably when I was nine or ten years old. And I loved this book, and it's one of those that I came back to time and time again. In essence, it's an adventure story. So it has a quest in the heart of it, <clears throat> and children love quests. And as a young child living in Yorkshire, to me, the idea of this story, which is three children, Meg, who's been bullied at school, her younger brother, Charles Wallace, and a friend of theirs called Calvin, going across time and space to find Meg's father, who's a scientist, was just out of this world, and it really captured my imagination. So in a quest, you have to have three elements. You have to have a really difficult job that you've got to achieve, and as this cover shows, in this case, the really difficult job meant travelling in space and through time. You have to have a very important purpose for the quest, and in this case, it was rescuing Meg's father, a scientist who'd worked at Cape Canaveral and in Cambridge and was now lost. Letters had stopped coming, nobody knew where he was, but they did know that he was trying to do space travel. And then you have to have a very difficult return from the journey. So those three elements form a quest. And it's like many other quest books, um, The Lord of the Rings, the Narnia books, or Kalinsky Heights for adults. It has all those different elements. And one of the best things about this book is that as well as being um, an adventure, it has lots of really interesting themes. And one of the things that Madeleine Lengel said about books was that if there was something really difficult she wanted to write about, she would put it in a book for children rather than in a book for adults. So in this book, there are ideas about um, the different dimensions. So the five dimensions, the first dimension is a single line, the second dimension is a square, the third dimension is a cube, the fourth dimension is time, and the fifth dimension is time squared. And we all know E equals MC squared, and you might be discovering about this in your physics lessons, but it's included in this book. She also includes ideas about how to tesseract, which is time squared. It's a new idea that she had more than 50 years ago. Scientists are looking into how to do space travel without going the long way around through light years of travelling to get to far distant planets. In this book, Meg, Charles Wallace and Calvin travel to three different planets. They have to fight a battle with IT, IT. IT is taking over humans' minds dehumanising them, making them into robots. They fight the power of it with the power of their own minds, with the power of love, with the power of consistency and loyalty, all these things which are so such wonderful values. And the other thing I love about this book is that as I was reading it, I could hear echoes of other things I'd read. And just like adults love to catch references to understand um, what a story is built on, uh, in this book, there are references to The Tempest, to Macbeth, to Rudyard Kipling, to the Gettysburg Address. Um, it's absolutely remarkable. And they just dropped in as people are talking to each other, as they're fighting the evil it. They're trying to exercise their minds. And so they, they say things which they uh, know and are familiar with. And, and if you've read those things as well, you think, ah, oh, I get that, I understand why it's important. And one other thing that they talk about, which I didn't really know much about when I first read this book, is about poetry and about sonnets. And they use the form of the sonnet as a metaphor for life, that life is a battle and you've got to always be active and not passive. And these children are really active in this adventure. But when you're active within the boundaries of life, then you have the richest life that's possible. And they say, like a sonnet, it has to be a very strict form, but within that form you can do anything you like. So that was rather wonderful. And I suppose I would sum up this book by reminding myself of what a very famous judge, uh, Baroness Hale, has as her motto, which is that women are equal to everything. And this book demonstrates that children are equal to everything. They can cope with difficult ideas, 
they can understand in the context of an adventure how important it is to fight evil with good, to fight hate and mindlessness and control with discipline and love and faithfulness. So in every kind of way, it's just the best book.